I was sitting with the hairdressers on a warm Friday in late August when I popped outside to take a phone call. Miss Tina Rashid, a surgeon specialising in gender affirming genital surgery, would be performing a, uh, a vaginoplasty on me on the 12th of October 2022 at Parkside Private Hospital. I let out a tiny scream and then I went back inside to finish my lovely pink hair tie. <laughs> It would just be six short weeks until I embarked upon the roller coaster of a lifetime. These last couple of weeks before being admitted to hospital were some of the toughest of my life. I was asked to stop taking my hormone medication four weeks before the surgery date, and this was extremely taxing on my kind of mental health, my emotions, um, and then this combined with all the like high stress and anxiety of this big looming life event coming up. Um, it was just so disruptive to me and I struggled concentrating at work and being with friends. I was so fragile and emotional that I'm kind of surprised I made it to the operating table, honestly. Um, you know, without kind of running away and hiding under my duvet for a month. Focusing on preparations for recovery uh, helped so much as I was able to make sure that the things that I could control were as kind of perfected and sorted out as best as they could be right on time for my surgery. I think one of the hardest tasks with uh, kind of bottom surgery is actually getting yourself to the hospital in the first place. And once you're there, the nurses are essentially taking care of you and moving you along. Kind of like this, um, just like a, a, a vagina conveyor belt, right? I think having company to reassure you and help you uh, kind of emotionally just helps so much, especially afterwards. Okay, this is uh, the morning of well, I'm going into hospital later. Tomorrow's a big day. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Rude. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, yeah, so today's um, frenetic. Um, so I'm trying to get as much done today just to make the flat kind of livable and as easy for me to get around and do living for the next couple of weeks, um, once I'm back from hospital. Um, I also need to pack my bag. You can currently hear my uh, washing machine. I'm currently cleaning my sheets, making sure I've got a fresh bed. I've got all my supplies near the bed. Um, and yeah, just making sure the place is like tidy, livable and comfortable. Um, and I think like trying to do all these steps one by one is gonna help me uh, deal with the panic, which is definitely there. Um, so I'm just like doing my silly little tasks um, to try and distract myself a little bit um, because yeah, I'm getting those, uh, those anxiety feels right now, pretty strong. Um, I've washed my hair. Uh, this will be the last time I will be able to do it for like a week. So I made sure to really like get in there and get it like cleaned up good. I dyed my hair last week. Um, just so it's nice and fresh, because I won't be able to do it for a few weeks. Um, and yeah, I think there's not really a lot more I can do other than just be ready. I've got some breakfast, I had a little wander down to the bakery, got myself some little bits. Today is scary, we'll get through it. Once I was settled into my room, uh, my dinner order was taken, which was a humble pepper hummus sandwich. Pretty nice, honestly followed by a nurse who popped in to pop some identity bracelets onto my wrists, um, as well as going over a lot of paperwork. There is a lot of paperwork when you go to hospital. It seems to never stop. It, most days a nurse is gonna pop in, write some stuff down. You know, they must be going through like a tree per person, you know? <laughs> After this, the nurse gave me my first blood filler injection. Um, this goes into the tummy. It's a little bit painful, not gonna lie to you. Um, but this was pretty straightforward, nice and quick, and it was followed by a doctor who came to take some bloods before kind of a big day. After that, I was essentially left to settle in for the evening. I said my goodbyes to my best friend, uh, Faye, who uh, was with me every step of the way um, that day. Um, and then I was just left to try and relax and then try and sleep. Hey, I'm in bed, um, about to go or try and go to sleep before the big day tomorrow. Just thanks to everyone who's just been really lovely and supportive. It's meant a lot. Because 
I'm not gonna lie, like, this is the scariest night of my life. Um, yeah, this time tomorrow, I'm gonna have a veg. I think bottom surgery is quite peculiar in the sense that trans people are held to such a much higher standard, um, you know, than cis people ever are when it comes to things like certainty, right? We're expected to approach, like, surgery, medication, hormones with this um, absolute lack of doubt. And yet no one is ever, like, 100% sure about things, right? Um, we, we always have these kind of doubts about things, like, you know, if you're asking out a date, you're starting a new job, you're moving cities, um, or any other kind of, like, non-emergency surgery that's, you know, like, hip replacements, right? There's always going to be, like, this level of risk and this kind of leap of faith that you must take in order to get this thing done. And, you know, why does bottom surgery have to be different to this, right? We have to see multiple psychiatrists for these very demeaning, humiliating assessments, you know, where they're asking really personal questions, they're trying to find any way possible to prove that you're kind of lying or that you're not kind of mentally sound to actually get this surgery done. And it's kind of disgusting and, you know, us trans people have to play this game and what, you know, why are we denied when a psychiatrist deems that we're kind of neurodiverse in some way and we're not able to fully understand the ramifications, you know, despite spending so many hours doing all this research on, on these surgeries and why we want to get them. But I think the thoughts and feelings and emotions around surgery are seldom straightforward. They're always so complicated and tricky. In the weeks before, and especially the night before surgery, I was just petrified and full of doubt and fear. My mind was filled with this idea of just taking off and running away in the middle of the night. Um, and just trying to, you know, repress my dysphoria and just try and get on with what I had. And, you know, avoiding this very scary trip down to the operating theatre. Um, but, you know, like, I was talking to friends online and they were, like, calming me down and consoling me and saying like, oh, you know, you just have to get downstairs, it will be fine, do not worry about it. And, you know, this helped a lot. It also helped that I was also in a backless hospital gown, because there was no way at all that I would be running out onto the street with my arse hanging out. The very best way to be woken up in the morning is at 5.45 by a nurse, bringing an enema bottle with them. <laughs> This is not a fun experience. I do not recommend um, getting an enema in hospital. Um, I mean, it's kind of unavoidable. It was for the best. But my God, it was a tough experience. <laughs> it was cold and I quickly started cramping and I felt awful and I was just fighting back like pain for 10 long minutes. And then afterwards, you know, I was able to to sort things out and things just felt fantastic. Um, you know, I think I saw God. That final shower was very emotional. Um, I made sure to have kind of one final look in the mirror at kind of my existing um, kind of body with its current configuration. Um, and I, I was crying quite a lot throughout, you know, like, because it, it felt like saying goodbye in a way. You know, like, for all the faults and problems I've had, you know, part of me did feel like I was going to miss that old part of my body. Um, and it was quite a weird feeling, you know. Almost, <laughs> almost like saying goodbye to a friend. Um, despite this, I carried on, um, had my shower. I then got dressed in my sexy, sexy hospital garments. Um, so there was my uh, hospital gown, uh, backless. I had my paper pants, um, I had my very fetching thigh-high uh, stockings which I used to prevent blood clots from forming in the legs, um, and to top it all off, uh, some red grippy socks to stop me from falling over on the ward.
I was as ready as I could be to meet my anaesthetist and surgeon for the final paperwork and start going down for my surgery. Hey Ian, see you on the other side, it's about 30 minutes away, I've just met my anaesthetist. Um, yep. <laughs> this is scary. Hey Ian, see you on the other side, it's about 30 minutes away, I've just met my anaesthetist. Um, yep. <laughs> This is scary. The moment the nurses came in to take me downstairs to theatre was pure terror, you know. I kind of froze up a little bit and managed to kind of get the words out to just write a quick little goodbye message to my friends on Discord um, and also let my kind of Twitter followers know um, things were happening now. Um, this was about ten past eight in the morning uh, for context. I then kind of put my phone, my iPad away in the safe in my uh, room. Um, before picking a pillow up of, off of my bed and following the nurses to the lift which took us down to the surgery floor. When the lifts opened I was kind of dazzled by these really bright lights and kind of how they reflected off of this pristine white walls, white ceiling, white floor. It was kind of like walking into a spaceship. If you've ever seen the TV show Severance, um, it's very similar vibes with the corridors, all kind of like snaking, amazing around. Um, I feel like it'd be very easy to get lost down there. Uh, I was kind of led through these corridors by the nurse and before the kind of the final corner, that's roughly where I started to really break down and cry. Um, the nurse kind of anticipated this. I think she's seen it happen many, many times. Um, she had her hand ready to kind of take mine, carry on leading me, giving me these really reassuring squeezes and just letting me know that things would be fine. Um, and I really appreciated her for the whole way down. The anaesthetist's room is kind of like a cupboard. It's very small, it's a bit cramped, and there's a lot of various machines kind of kicking about inside it, as well as like various vials and medicines spread across the countertops. After being given a tissue to kind of dry my eyes, um, the anaesthetist kind of motioned to the trolley um, for me to lie down on. Um, before uh, kind of him and his assistant started to kind of hook me up to the various monitoring machines. Um, so there are like various probes being placed onto my body. Um, the anaesthetist um, put the cannula into the crook in my elbow, um, which to be honest, I didn't really feel. I was very high on, um, on adrenaline at this point, you know. Like I was cracking jokes with him um, out of kind of terror. Um, and meanwhile, like, the nurse was still holding my hand and um, squeezing it, just kind of reassuring me about kind of why I was doing this and kind of thing like, think about all the things you'll be able to do afterwards. And it was, it was really nice, you know. This was all done. Um, and then a oxygen mask was put on my face. Um, I was told to take some deep breaths. As this was happening, uh, the anaesthetist started running for fentanyl into my cannula. And then I just felt woozy and chilled out just instantly. It felt fantastic, not gonna lie to you. Um, they got me onto my side uh, so that they could put the spinal block into my back while I was asleep. Um, and then, I guess, things just kind of faded away. Um, I kind of felt the motion of the trolley being pushed towards operating theatre as I just kind of drifted out of consciousness. So I woke up in recovery, I was feeling really quite disoriented. I had a distant voice of a nurse saying like, oh Maisie, Maisie, like wake up, it's all done, it's over now. Um, and you know, I, I was slowly coming to and kind of realising where I was. Um, and as soon as, as I was kind of like aware of where I was, um, kind of a nurse took the oxygen mask off my uh, face and then started offering me little sips of water. Um, I took a quick little peek under the blanket and I could see like a smooth crotch kind of covered in this um, this latex pressure dressing and I just felt this really strong wave of relief just completely wash over me. It felt fantastic, like, you know, it, it was really great just knowing things had been done and it was kind of the, the terrifying bit was over, you know. So I was kind of in recovery for about 20 minutes before the nurses took me back up to my room. Good morning. I mean, it's afternoon, but like, yeah, it's all done. I feel super chilled out. Um, I mean, a bit uncomfortable, but not in like a lot of pain at all. Uh, yeah, I. <laughs> it's finally happened. Oh, I feel.
feels like great about this. Like, damn. I'll try not to cry because that will um, hurt a little bit. But yeah, it's all done. Just need to relax now. Back in the room, I had a morphine pump attached to my arm, which I kind of never ended up using, but it was there anyway. Um, I had a catheter tube poking out of this uh, pressure dressing and connected to a catheter bag um, to the side of my bed. I had some cuffs on my legs which would squeeze my calves every few seconds um, just to kind of stimulate blood flow down there and prevent any blood clots from forming. The spinal block was really still quite active, um, at least for the next few hours. Um, so it was quite bizarre just not feeling any sensation below the waist. Like I could poke my legs and I'd feel nothing. Um, and this would actually make things quite hard when it came to like balancing in the bed and like sitting up to take meals, right? Um, I ended up spilling quite a lot of food kind of on me. Um, it's just a skill that you kind of develop over the course of the week. I was given my phone and my gadgets pretty much straight away after I got back to my room. In hindsight, maybe not the smartest idea, but I was pretty lucid compared to some of my other friends who have been through the process before, right? Um, I was able to do a little uh, little selfie, uh, tell everyone I was fine, and then, um, yeah, started kind of calling people and, you know, just trying to relax, I guess. Um, I got my food about 30 minutes after returning to my room, um, so it was a, like a simple salad and a soup. Um, and I was very gingerly picking at these, um, just because I didn't want to make myself sick so soon. I don't know if having food that, that soon is really a good idea, but it was kind of given to me and I was hungry, so I ended up eating it. For the rest of the day, pretty straightforward honestly, um, just relaxing. I still had um, this residual painkiller and anaesthesia running in my system, so things were pretty much quite easy, you know. Like, there was not a lot of difficulty going on at this point. Eventually in the evening it was time for me to try and sleep, um, which I found quite difficult, honestly. I think in hindsight I would have asked for a sleeping pill. Alright, so I've been, well it's half one now, I've been up and about, well, say up and about, I've been awake for an hour and a half. Um, haven't really noticed the passage of time, I'll be honest. Um, so I woke up around 12 in recovery, um, they were checking up on me, I was like surprisingly aware of where I was, although like I was in the middle of a really good dream and I, I was kind of a bit annoyed when I first came to, I was like oh okay, um, and then I was like oh wait am I in my hospital room? Oh no wait I just had surgery, so it was a little bit of like a mind blow. Um, I'm back in my room now. Um, I've actually got my, my lunch, which I'm taking very gently. Um, because yeah, like, I don't quite know how um, like sick I am. I feel exhausted, I'll be honest, but I feel really, really happy. Like, I'm really glad I did this. And yeah, the, you know, I didn't, think I'd have like any like softy moments like oh it feels like oh weight's been lifted off my shoulders blah, 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 blah. people were right yeah I I feel so relieved I had a little look kind of just under the duvet and it's it's just nuts like oh my god um I'm gonna try and eat this gently and slowly I might end up having a nap instead um, because I am like exhausted. Um, other than that, I mean, the anaesthetist was oh my god, I've got soup on me already. Um, really kind of lovely, friendly, reassuring nurse was holding my hand the whole way down. Um, but you kind of just get there, lie down, and just let them do it, I guess. And I was just like cracking jokes about random things like my music taste. Next thing I knew, I was asleep. So, couldn't have gone better. Take care.
Right, so they just tried standing for the first time and just got faint pretty much instantly, so... Yeah, I think I'll be even down for a little bit. Might have been up or something. Um, it's very weird being there, like, this week. It's like, even just shifting around on the bed and... It just takes a lot of energy that I don't really have, and it's such a... Yeah, it really messes with me. It's weird. I'm gonna have a nap, I think. I've got some tea. Um, but yeah. Things are going well, otherwise. Which is good. Day two was fantastic because I got to experience the Parkside breakfast for the first time. Um, this was preceded by a couple of rounds of uh, vital checks from the nurses. Um, housekeeping came round and changed all the sheets. All this time I was smelling toast from the kitchen down the corridor, so it was kind of teasing, not gonna lie. But when I eventually got the breakfast, fantastic. I was so ready for it. Um, and then straight afterwards one of the nurses kind of came along and encouraged me to stand up for the first time and mobilise. Um, the first time doing this, the instant I stood up, I felt really faint straight away, um, so I got light, like back down in bed. Um, we tried this later on in the day and I was able to stand up and walk around and it was fantastic. Um, later on I was able to go down the corridor. Now that you can walk by yourself, um, the nurses actually will just let you uh, empty your own catheter bag, um, so you know. I guess that's good, I suppose. Um, I always felt a little bit guilty whenever they were doing that for me. So it was nice that I could just get some of my independence back, you know. The pressure dressing is not the most comfy thing in the world. Um, it, feels, it feels like the worst tuck in history. And it also, it presses on your ribs. So uh, you can't really take full breaths. Um, and it just feels very tight and uncomfortable. So by the end of the day, I was really ready for it to come off. It would come off on day three eventually. Pain-wise, a little bit of soreness, a bit of discomfort. I was also starting to notice some of the nerve reconnection sensation beginning to happen. These feel like very small electric shocks happening in various places around kind of the labia and the clitoris. Um, the first time it happens, it is very alarming but you do kind of get used to it. Even now, you know, nine weeks later, I still get those odd little pings and pangs. Um, and they do catch you off guard. I kind of like, I'll be talking to someone and then I'll just yelp. <laughs> but you know, it's not, it's not too bad at all. I know some people deal with much worse pain. Um, so I, I got off really well. Final pro tip, do not tug on your catheter line by accident. It is very uncomfortable. Hello, so, I mean, this is uh, the end of day one, I think we call it, because yesterday was day zero, this was surgery day, maybe, I don't know, um, I think this is, they call it day one, um, but yeah, I've been like up and about, I've, I've had a little one to like, um, like up and down the corridor, I feel a lot more mobile the first time I did it, I was like super faint, so yeah, I feel really happy, like, because I was starting to struggle a little bit, not gonna lie. I think the lack of mobility, um, it really gets to you, especially as someone who like likes being quite independent and being able to do things on their own, having to get like help from most basic of tasks. Just I it, I don't know, it just really bummed me out. I've managed to brush my hair a little bit, at least on the side I'm gonna sit up in a bit and do the rest. Um and then I have like my first visitors. Um really happy with how things are going so far. Um, the morphine is disconnected because I just haven't needed to use it. Um, I've just been on paracetamol and like some thing that I can't remember the name of um, because I can't take ibuprofen. Um, yeah, like really happy with things so far. Tomorrow the pressure dressing is coming off. The annoying squeezy leg boot things have been removed uh, this afternoon because I'm active and I'm now having to do some stuff on my own like I need to um, 
like empty my cafe to myself now, which, you know, is, to be honest, I'm happy about that. I like having a bit more autonomy and I can just have a little one dropping down the road as I, like, up the corridor as I please, so, yeah. Really um, happy with how things are going so far and I'm really excited to see my anatomy tomorrow. So the nurse has just come by to take my um, pressure dressing off because um, there's a little bit of bleeding right now. Um, so we're just going to keep an eye on it, like a minimal amount apparently. Um, so I'm just going to lie here for like 10 minutes and see how things are going. But I can like finally see like, you know, my new anatomy and it's really wonderful, really fantastic to see. Hey, um, vitals are looking good. I've TMI, but like I've just kind of you know, things are moving down there again. Like my guts are good, um, and yeah, like, like I changed my gown and just seeing my figure in the mirror just brought me to tears. Like it was beautiful. I'm so happy right now. On day three, I was finally um, relieved of my pressure dressing. The nurse came along in the morning and took it off. I kept an eye on things because um, they wanted to make sure I wasn't bleeding too much, which is pretty sensible. Um, literally the instant it came off, I needed to go and open my bowels, um, to put it politely. Um, which, you know, the nurses, they all continually ask you whenever they see you. Wherever you are, you'll be walking down the corridor and they'll ask you, you know, have you opened your bowels yet? And, you know, this time I was able to say, yes, I have. And the nurse was so pleased with me. Um, I felt so accomplished for, like, the most mundane of tasks. This was the first time I was kind of able to look down there with the creative use of the selfie camera on my phone. And I think for the first time I was able to kind of get a feel for what happened. Um, you know, there's a lot of blood, there's, it was kind of swollen, um, you know, there's kind of stitches, there's a little bit of bruising, uh, but like despite all this, um, it, it felt like mine, you know, like it felt like my vagina. And I think it really kind of started that process of convalescence, um, of like tr reconnecting with your body post-surgery, and um, that kind of mental recovery. Um, and it started that process of it from being a surgical site to being my new vagina. Um, and this took time, honestly. I think this mainly happened a couple of weeks post-surgery for me. Sometimes it happens a bit longer for other people. For some people, it happens while they're in hospital. Um, but it, I didn't feel like super connected to it at this point. It was still like a source of pain and discomfort. There was a catheter line coming out of it. It was covered in like gauze and dry blood and stitches. It just didn't yet feel mine. Evening of day three, um, I was kind of struck with a blockage in the catheter line. And this was so uncomfortable. Um, it felt like this building pressure within my like abdomen um, and I noticed that my catheter wasn't really draining very well um, so I let the nurses know they tried a variety of things flushing the lines um, deflating and reinflating the balloon that sits inside your bladder as well as just kind of trying to straighten out the line and stuff and eventually it you know they managed to get it sorted but I think this was the hardest moment for me in hospital um, you know, it was 1am, I was lying on my side in this kind of agony, just thinking like, God, I just want this to be over, please. Um, yeah, that was kind of the toughest night for me. Good morning, it is 8am, uh, my Saturday. Um, I've done my first set of stairs uh, since like Tuesday, so I'm, I'm really happy. The uh, sun is shining, I've got my brekkie, and I'm actually like sat down for once to take it instead of being in bed. So I'm going to get less bits on me. Um, yeah, last night was a bit of a struggle. I had like um, a problem with the catheter where I was just like retaining stuff up there. And it got very painful very quickly. 
and so the nurse, bless, bless her, was just like sorting it out at like well, 1am for me and then I slept pretty well. So I think I'm going to have this and then I'm going to go back to bed because I'm still a little bit sleepy and I've got guests coming. Um, but yeah, like I, I feel really happy this morning. Day 10. Bye. Days 4 and 5 occurred over the weekend for me. These were the most straightforward days, um, where essentially I was just mobilising, changing my kind of sanitary pads, making sure there wasn't too much blood on them, and just trying to relax. And honestly, during these two days, I got a little bit bored. Um, I think if I didn't have any visitors, I would have struggled so much. I ended up spending the time watching old Simpsons episodes and kind of keeping my... Um, my hospital room door open just to see if anyone would come past and catch my eye and pop in and say hello. This actually worked on two people. <laughs> so, you know, if you're at Parkside and you want to make some friends, leave your door open. Um, yeah, other than that, it was kind of dealing with this um, ever-present pressure from the internal vagina pack, which is a essentially stents the vagina and stops it from closing up so, uh, so soon. And then you also have obviously the pressure of kind of a balloon inside inside your bladder from the catheter. That's also pretty uncomfortable. Um, and by the end of day five, <clears throat> this was getting kind of unbearable for me and I was just ready for the next day for this to get removed for me. All right, one more of these talking to myself things before I get to sleep. Um, tomorrow's big day. Uh, pack is coming out, catheter is coming out. I get to dilate for the first time. Um, assuming all things are good, the catheter stays out, importantly. Um, so it'll be really exciting. It'll be nice to si finally see things down there, like, um, without any pipes and things coming out of it, you know? Um, yeah, t today's just been a chill day. It's been nice seeing friends, it's been, I don't know, a little hard just because you can't really go very far here. Um, it is what it is. But yeah, I'm looking forward to tomorrow, I'm looking forward to getting all this crap out because uh, it is very uncomfortable. I've just twisted myself on my catheter line. Point proven, right? Night hole. Yeah, big morning for me. Um, so straight after breakfast. Uh, the gender nurse came in and did three big things. Take the catheter out. Not the biggest fan. <laughs> Take the pack out of um, my new vagina. It w was over and done with nice and quickly as well. Um, and then taught me how to dilate. Um, so I've done that for the first time. And she also like kind of showed me everything going on down there. And it's... Generally that, combined with um, kind of showering for the first time in a week, it's just been one of the, like, the happiest moments of my life. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I've ever been this happy. I'm trying not to cry again. <laughs> yeah. It's... I'm, gonna just, I'm gonna stop this now because this is silly. Day six was the big day for me, and this is where the nurse would come along, remove my catheter, remove my vaginal pack, and show me how to dilate, as well as finally giving me a look at what has happened down there, um, kind of beyond a selfie camera. I was pretty anxious about this, honestly. The, I was a bit worried about the pain that I'd experienced. I was a bit worried about the dilation, because this is something that you have to do for the rest of your life. I felt a need to get it right first time. Um, so I felt like there was a lot of pressure weighing on me. The catheter removal happened straight after breakfast. It was not the most comfortable experience of my life. I'll be honest, I did not enjoy it. But it did literally take five seconds. The vaginal pack removal was comparatively very painless for me. It just felt very weird because I was feel, feeling kind of sensation from a part of me that never existed before. I think 
feeling a cavity where there wasn't previously one feels very strange, not gonna lie to you. Um, but it was kind of affirming the way, kind of feeling like, wow, you know, this is actually happening. This, you know, this has been given to me. This feels great. Um, the nurse then kind of showed me, uh, using a mirror, like my anatomy and pointed out the various uh, points of interest, let's say, you know, for clitoris, for, la for two sets of labia, um, where the urethral opening is, um, the vaginal vault, as they call it, which is just the opening, and kind of where the stitches are. Um, this is the moment where I ended up really crying on the nurse because it just, it felt like I was able to see it and kind of, it felt like mine for the first time and it felt really special and it was a really beautiful moment. I think it was probably the best moment of my life. The nurse was giving me tissues and stuff while I was just sobbing, um, but yeah, I, I felt incredible. The nurse then showed me my dilators and showed me how to use the first one, uh, the smaller of the two, putting it into me, holding it there for five minutes and then removing it and then she left me to my own devices for the second dilator, the bigger one. After this, I was able to go and have my first ever shower in a week and, you know, again, looking in the bathroom mirror, seeing my body in this new configuration was so wonderful and I felt so euphoric and happy. Um, again, just, it was one of the most beautiful moments of my life and, you know, there's a video of me just sobbing because I just couldn't hold back that emotion at that point. Especially now that the catheter is out as well, it just felt, it, it felt like my body. And that's a weird thing to say, but before it, it just felt like a surgical site. One of the other things, um, now that the catheter was removed, that the nurses had to perform on me, was something called a trial without catheter. And this is where they want to make sure that you are not retaining too much urine. So whenever you pass urine, you do it into like a bedpan placed over the toilet. Um, then the nurse will come in, measure how much has come out of you, and then perform a bladder ultrasound to see how much is still within you. And you get three tries of this. If you fail on the third try, the catheter goes back in. So first time was fine. The second time I was retaining a little bit too much. The third time I was well under. And you know, all this time you're learning to urinate again with completely different muscles and you know, like a shorter urethra and there's a lot of kind of pressure on you at that point. Um, for me, it took like 15 minutes to be able to actually pass urine after sitting on the toilet. Um, I just felt so stressed and anxious and I just wasn't sure what I was doing. I ended up having to like run the tap just to hear like water running. Um, I had music playing. I like stood up and walked around the bathroom just to try and like get things going. Um, but eventually it worked out. And you find as well, it takes a few days to a week for things to feel normal for you down there. For me, it took a bit longer than most people, I feel. Some people, they say um, that they took to this very fast. For me, it kind of felt like vomiting a little bit. It felt very involuntary when it eventually happened. But yeah, you know, different things for different people, you know. I then spent the rest of the day just relaxing, dilating some more and preparing for going home the next day. Good morning, it's uh, discharge day, fantastic. Um, got my breakfast ready to go down there. I've got my people clothes back on. I've had a shower again. Oh, I, I'm so excited. <laughs> done my morning dilation, um, yeah, this, this, I'm really happy, um, nurse came in and said it's the best vagina she's ever seen, uh, yeah, what a, what a compliment, um, so I'll be out by about 11, um, I'm really happy, have a wonderful Tuesday. 
So day seven is home day. Um, I got up, I had my first dilation of the day, the nurse came round and did her final observations on me just after I had breakfast. Um, I was able to shower and put my kind of outside clothes on for the first time and you know that felt wonderful as well. It felt like I was ready to go and it felt like I was starting my recovery in earnest you know. Whereas in the hospital you're being looked after, you're wearing the like the arseless gown. It doesn't feel like your life. Once all my discharge paperwork was done and my friend Faye had showed up to pick me up, I was able to go downstairs and experience fresh air for the first time. And that felt fantastic. Feeling sunbeams on your skin after a week of being indoors is so wonderful. You can feel it, like, so strong. Um, kind of the crispness of the wind felt fantastic. All the colours um, of like, you know, the outdoors were so bright and, and vibrant. The journey home was pretty uneventful. I got some coffee, um, I got some bread from my favourite little bakery. Um, and then just being home in my own space again was really nice. And that's when I was able to start feeling a bit more comfortable. Um, I think dilating was very difficult for the first couple of weeks for me. It actually was more difficult than when I was in hospital because I also had to look after myself. But I think recovery, I'm going to talk about in another video, um, whereas I'm just focusing on kind of the hospital stay and the surgery itself. I think leading up to surgery, I was extremely anxious about how things would go, about possible complications. Um, and also about how I would react mentally to things. Um, you know, that slight bit of doubt that I'd wake up and think I've done the wrong thing. Um, with complications, you know, I've had friends kind of go through the same surgery and have like a complete wide range of um, outcomes. I know friends who have also done really well. I know friends who have had minor complications. I know friends who've had quite scary um, experiences in hospital with kind of moderate blood loss. And I think being aware of these risks did help me to make that informed choice. Um, but, you know, I was terrified going in, you know. And that feeling of doubt was instantly gone the moment I woke up. And actually, I never again kind of felt that doubt ever since having the operation. Although I know some people do for a few days, that kind of um, post-op depression, it's a real thing. Um, and you know, as well as physically having to recover from surgery, you also have to mentally recover. I was extremely lucky in that I have a very big group of friends um, and community who are able to look out for me. I had a WhatsApp group um, full of people who were offering to step up and come help me out with tasks at home, cook me food, just give me company um, if I need it. And I'm so grateful for every single one of them. I'm grateful for all my friends uh, kind of online who are encouraging me, um, talking me through things. Um, my friends who had experienced the surgery as well and were giving me tips on how to survive a hospital stay and how to cope with recovery best. I was grateful for, you know, everyone on social media who was just wishing me well and I feel like going down to theatre I was terrified but in the back of my head I was thinking like you know there's these hundreds of people who genuinely want the best for me it was it was really reassuring on top of that I have my kind of communities in London um, my climbing group um, I have like the film group I go to and there's so many connections through these groups um, and so many friends and chosen family where they were all wishing me the best and kind of looking out for me and I'm eternally grateful and yeah I just want to say thank you because these past nine weeks you know there's been some incredible moments there's also been the hardest days of my life and I would not have got through them without this wonderful group of people. So thank you so much. And